Gary, but I grew up in a small mill town in central Massachusetts called Millbury. Okay. And um, everybody knew everybody and everybody worked in a mill. There were seven mills in town, including my dad. And um, one day he comes home around Christmas with a box with a cord attached to it, something he called a television set. This is about 1959. And it was three channels on. And they were boring. Except one day I found these two guys beating the crap out of each other in the middle of a ring. And uh, I became fascinated. And I said, what am I watching? And I knew it wasn't boxing. They didn't have gloves on. And then um, Ray Morgan, who was the announcer, it was from Capitol, it was WWWF from Capitol um, Wrestling from Washington. And Ray Morgan says, and tune in next week for professional wrestling. More of your great stars. Well, um, I became a wrestling junkie at the age of uh, probably around uh, 11 or 12. And we didn't have internet in those days. We didn't have computers. We didn't have many shows. So in the summertime, we had to find things to do that was fun. So my brother and I would wrestle and pretend we had our own wrestling promotion on a front lawn. And we would pretend, you know, we were like Antonino Rocca or many of the stars of that chief big heart or whoever. Um, and, um, you know, I became kind of hooked. And then I went to my first show at the Worcester Memorial Auditorium. Uh, and on that show, Bruno San Martino was the main event against Curtis Iakia. And um, after begging my mom to let us, I, I was a little older at that time, and begging my mom to let me go with my brother alone, we had front row seats. And believe it or not, we were some of the only kids in there. They were all blue collar workers back in the 60s, smoking, drinking. You could hardly see the ring. And um, I became really hooked on wrestling after having attended my first live event and seeing Bruno in action and seeing people like uh, Johnny Rods and uh, Arnold Skoland, um, Chief, Chief Big Heart, um, The Beast people that probably most people have forgotten. So that's a little bit of my intro in, in, into into my um, love with uh, pro wrestling. So this was like around the time of the territory days where you had like local promotions kind of running everything before they had big companies kind of take over before the WWE became such a national uh, juggernaut. And so you had like a lot of people just kind of go back and forth between each territory, the East coast, especially up North where you were just had so many stars passing by. Well, they didn't, they didn't fly in those days. So the, the East coast had, had the opportunity to go from Washington, uh, DC to Baltimore once a month, they'd go Washington every six weeks, maybe Washington, Baltimore, Philly. Um, Madison Square Garden, White Plains, which is where I spent most of my life living uh, in that area. Then they'd go up to Hartford, then they'd go to Boston Garden, then they would go up to Maine, then they'd come back and start all over again, but they could drive. And so, it, and, and, they, and obviously those arenas could pack people in as compared to somebody in the Midwest driving for hours and getting a smaller crowd. So we had a lot of the stars. And of course, the magazines in those days all came out of New York. So they favored people like Bruno. And But I knew there were other territories because I bought all the magazines and uh, read the read in the back. The NWA had the, the it was in the back of um, actually boxing magazines in those days. And they'd have the NWA ratings. They'd have the AWA. They'd have the WWWF. So I knew there were other territories. Uh, around. So I was probably one of the few people that did because most people in the East only knew of the um, uh, of the major stars like um, Bruno and uh, people of that nature. Yeah.